Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh Jesus. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Susan, good morning Adeline, good morning Jane, Nawal, oh Baraka honey, Baraka, Baraka.
this morning. I want us this morning. The Lord bless you this morning. Um, bless you for being on this morning. I honor God for you. I magnify God for you. I want to, oh, good morning, Kara. I want to obey the Lord. Let's pray. Let's, let's thank the Lord for a new morning. Come on, let's do it together. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this eighth day. We really appreciate you, Lord, for waking us up for life for mercy, for grace. We thank you for preservation. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you for ordering our steps. We thank you for your goodness. We worship. This morning we are saying that, Lord, it is you who deserves every praise, every thanks, every honor. We ascribe it all unto you. Nobody gets no glory, but you deserve it all. Therefore, we give it all to you. In Jesus' precious name. I thank you for the lives of your people that have guarded my God from around the globe. Watching some through their iPads, through their cell phones, um, through their, um, their computers. I am asking, oh God, that this morning you will visit somebody on this platform this morning and you will do them good and you will show them your glory thank you in jesus name amen i won't ask this morning you are bringing yourself under the covering my god of the blood lift up your voice with me bring yourself under the covering of the blood come on do it together father this morning we bring ourselves under the covering of the blood of jesus we bring our sons and our daughters. We bring our husbands and wives and aunties and cousins and nephews and nieces. Father, we ask King of God that the blood of Jesus, my God, will cover in the precious name of Jesus. I'm asking this morning that you will have your way in our lives. Blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I saturate my atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. Where I'm sitting with the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray that the angel you have assigned for our lives, may that angel never leave us. May that angel stand by us, draw his sword, protecting us. Every area of our lives in Jesus' name, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, may we be covered by the blood. And then glory belongs to you and you alone. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blood. We are grateful for the blood. We are thankful for the blood in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to bring your children before the Lord. We are lifting up prayer. We are lifting up prayer for um, our children. And so lift up your voice with me. Father, we lift up our children before you. We pray for their safety. We pray that you will um, cover and protect them wherever they may be. We are asking, oh God, that you will not leave our children alone. But Lord, your mercy and your goodness, your blessings and your provision, your security will be the portion of our daughters and our sons. I bring my spiritual children before you as well. Jehovah God, my God, I pray that wherever they may be, Lord, 
May your right hand of power keep them. Spread your wings and protect them. Father them, mother them. Supply their needs according to your riches. Do them good. Save and deliver them. Father, children, my God, the Bible declares our inheritance from you. Lord, I pray if there is anyone watching this morning that is believing you for children. Father, even as testimonies upon testimonies are coming of pregnancy, oh God, I pray that you will bless that womb. Let your name be exalted and glorified. I lift up, oh God, my daughters, spiritual daughters and sons. I lift them all up before you. Father, this morning I am thanking you for their lives. I am blessing and glorifying you for their lives. For I know that you are doing something new in them, for them, through them, and with them. A million thanks. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, yesterday, how are you? Let me ask this. How are you? I believe you are doing fantastic. I believe that you are a conqueror. You've conquered. And I bless God for every one of you. And I thank God for you. Yesterday, good morning, Philomena. Yesterday, I um, I promise. I did. I promise. Uh, we were going to continue from. Thank you, thank you, Nephia. Thank you for covering me in the blood. Thank you. Thank you for praying for me. Yesterday, I um, I started. Um something and I really wanted to finish um, with um, finish today but um, the whole of yesterday was running back and forth and um, later in the day I um, went taking a nap I went sleeping it's um it's of course it's summer and uh, right here it's been what three days now it's so hot I mean the 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 temperature is something else and so um, I came back and um, went to sleep I was awoken out of um, my sleep and the first thing that I heard in my spirit surveillance surveillance now there are times where God will speak to you and you are in so much um, You are so much um, in into what um, God is saying to you that you don't even have time um, to now thinking I'm going to put on and do makeup and do, you don't even have time for it. Now this morning I want us we are going to look into yeah surveillance just as i i mean it was that that really woke me up surveillance and i want us to um take a look into god's word i am not going to do anything other than that which the spirit of god is prompting for us um to do and um i want you to pay attention I want you to get your notebook. I want you to get your pens. I want you to get your Bibles. We are going to look into God's word. And um, 
we are going to now pray strategically we are going to pray now with that said i want your every attention because there are things that i believe the spirit of the lord will be speaking to us this morning um that we will have to pay attention to and um anytime there is such an urgency in the realms of the spirit um, you ought to be prepared and you ought to um, be alert and to do um, or take into consideration the instructions that um, <laughs> the instructions that are being given um, to you so you will um, win all right you will win when god gives us a word um he has already taken care of but it is up to us why do i say taking care of god is telling us what the plan of the enemy is or what the enemy is doing and he's asking you and i to put ourselves together to um rise up and do something with it are you listening to me this morning and so this morning i really didn't when when i i i mean, I mean it was that that really woke me up and so didn't have time for for nothing couldn't wait for the time to come so we will be, we'll be um, alert and start doing something about it when I woke up from my sleep the Holy Spirit was giving me or was teaching me about something now this is it before you call somebody um, to come and install a device in your home, in your office, wherever. It means that <laughs> Marvel, this morning, no, I really didn't have time to do nothing. Before you call somebody to come to your home, to do anything, um, to um, install anything in your home. Number one, it means that you have something valuable in that particular house or room. You have something precious in there that you are doing everything to make sure that that thing is protected that it will not be stolen or it will not um, hijacked let me put it that way and so you do everything to protect when you have a warehouse and um, you have stuff in the warehouse you make sure that you put cameras all right um in those days a couple of years ago the cameras were big and huge so anybody passing by will know that there's a camera here so i ought to behave myself but in the time that we are in you go to hotel rooms and uh, there are cameras okay in hotel rooms i remember a couple of years ago there is um this lady that works for um now let me say this god uses natural stuff to teach us spiritual stuff i'm repeating myself again he uses natural stuff to teach us spiritual stuff 
In other words, what we see in the natural is already in the spirit. But he's using the natural to teach us what is happening in the spirit because it is already there. But because we are not always in the spirit, we don't know, okay? We don't know what is going on or happening in the spirit. And so he uses natural things to teach us, to alert us what is happening in the spirit. John, the revelator, was being um, or was with um, an angel of the Lord. There was a communication and instruction between um, him and the angel of the Lord. And John said, I was in the spirit on the lost day. In the spirit. Now, we are human. We cannot be in the spirit 24-7. And so God in his own wisdom finds a way to teach us little by little, little by little, little by little. He uses natural stuff because there are times where um, there are things that ought to be or we ought to know but God sees how immature we are that if he gives us things that we are not prepared for if you give a child something that the child is not trained to use that thing will kill the child for example I saw the other day um, I think somebody sent it to me it was on whatsapp these days everything is going through whatsapp and um, there is um, a mother sitting down and um, a father is teaching a daughter how to use the gun and this girl I believe she's seven or eight has um, um, something to cover the ear and they are on a shooting um, rank and this man is aggressively teaching the daughter how to shoot a gun now the age of the daughter we will say that the um we will say that the, the girl is too young why is this man teaching this girl how to shoot um you know at this age but guess what the father knows how and is teaching the daughter how the father knows how and is teaching the daughter how now if the girl as the father is teaching the girl if the girl was not taught or is not being taught and she picks up the gun oh you saw that video can you saw it okay awesome and um, if the girl had um, no um, instruction okay as to how to use the gun then she'll pick up the gun and there is a possibility that number one she'll kill somebody number two she'll kill herself and so the father is teaching this girl how to use the gun god in his own mercy christine you saw it too awesome god in his own mercy teaches us his children what is going on Rachel good morning honey what is going on in the realms of the spirit he's not going to come down himself and say hey here I am uh, bring your notebooks and let me teach you but he uses vessels not just me a whole bunch of people that God is using 
and so forth. I'm, I'm going to take my time this morning because I want us to come to a place of understanding. And so you protect your home. You protect offices, buildings, because you have valuable things there. Number two, one does that, especially if it's a corporation and they have a lot of information, they have a lot of files, then um, protection is needed. Um, and the, the Lord was using um, something about, um, for example, because of ministry, I want to use an example. Because of the ministry, and because I travel a lot, um, you may take a product to go sell, all right? Because it is not every pastor or preacher um, that is taking care of, not everybody, there are some, yes, but it's not everybody that the church, all right, um, takes care of. And so some of them have their product. They've, they've written books. Um, some of them are doing their own businesses on the side. When I was in Maryland, I was telling the preachers or the ministers there, I said, God ought to bless us, ministers, preachers, I'm talking about God giving us ideas for us to be able to um, to have our own money where um, you'll be able to start a company from the scratch. And the company will be doing very well outside of what God has called you to do as a preacher. I was talking to a beautiful lady down there um, and um, she um, does crusades, she travels and in this crusades, I'm, I'm get going somewhere with you, in this crusades where you go to poor areas and you are going to minister unto them and win their hearts for Christ, they don't have money to give you. So therefore, if you want to go there and raise money, you are not getting anything. If you are depending, oh yes, darling. If you are depending on the offerings that people are going to give you, sweetie, you will not do anything for yourself and you cannot do anything for your family. I'm not talking about money here. I'm using stuff as an example. Because I want your mind to be clear and your heart to receive. And so, I'm believing God. There is nothing wrong with preachers having their own businesses. There's nothing wrong with it. Because if some are looking at people to bless them or people to take care of them, they'll wait for a very long time. So I was sharing it with this precious lady that moves to different parts of the world to do crusades. Now she will have, she and her team will have to now use their own money because they know that God has given them an assignment. And um, how many people really, um, or how many offerings can you take? Or how many times will you tell people to give and they will give for you to go out there and win souls? Because there are times where you are going to minister to these people. You, the minister, you are the one who is will end up taking care of them physically. Because they don't have um, monies to give you. And um, she was explaining to me that there are many times... They go to do crusades. And after the, after the crusades, um, they bring back nothing. They do. Because they end up um, taking 
um, clothes and stuff, donations, and they will go and take care of these people. And after they take care of them, they preach to them the word of the living God. I want you, I'm going somewhere with you. And so therefore, how many times will a preacher ask for support? And I'm not asking anybody for money. So don't even, let, don't let your mind go anywhere. How many times will a preacher ask for money? And um, even though, yes, it's there that there are some that have abused. Okay, it's there. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's not there. It is there. But there are people that are genuinely, their heart are for the souls. And so this, um, beautiful lady tells me she says mommy um what can you do to help us do this so i told her as i'm going to um come talk to my husband and see what we can do um to help for this work for souls to be saved with that said if we went to i i she took me to a warehouse. A warehouse that um, she started a little business on the side. Because if she doesn't do that, and she's depending on God's people to support, she will not go anywhere. No. So, I was taken to this warehouse and uh, where she has stuff stored and uh, she's doing her best little by little she and her husband to do a business on the side so they can um they can have some revenue they can have some income so they can go out there to the remote areas of certain places and do god's work and save souls not just saving the souls but after you've saved the souls then what and uh some of them they will have to put it through school some of the children um those that want to learn a trade they have to help them um by paying for them to start a trade so all these things are there but when we entered into the warehouse Number one, the first thing I saw her doing was to disarm a security system. I'm going somewhere with you this morning. Hmm. Was to disarm a security system. Punching numbers. Okay. And then I was outside. She went in and then punched the numbers because just as the door was open, a beeping sound. Beep, 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 beep. So she has to go in first and then punch numbers in there and disarmed the security system. We went in, saw the place, prayed over the place, we left i left first because she will have to stay behind and punch in numbers to secure the place again there are cameras there some are visible and i believe there are some there that are not visible we are in the dispensation where security cameras are so tiny that you may not even know when you go to some of these places outside some of these places you may not even know that the bed you are sleeping on the um the um smoke detector sometimes the phone <laughs> sometimes the phone um Sometimes, even the shoe you are wearing, 
There was a movie that came out. I think it's called Enemy of the State. And this guy is walking around and have no idea that his the jacket he was wearing, they've tagged it. His shoe. And so wherever he went, he was being able, I mean, or he was being monitored because of the device that is in CCT, CCTVs. <laughs> A device that is connected to the heel of his shoe. They took off the heel of his shoe and then put a device in there and put it back. And so wherever he was walking, somebody was sitting behind um, a computer and was able to monitor where he was going. There are times where they will punch in um something and his whole being will appear there are times where they were only just tracking so the device under his shoes became a tracking device and they were able to track and let's go straight into what the lord um prompted me to talk about and to pray against we are talking i'm talking about it but we are going to pray against before we leave the platform all right and so you protect your valuables you protect your homes if you go to for example um uh, the white house for example the white house the surveillance the protection the cameras are not easy because here a whole president ought to be protected and so it is only maybe a few places that um, cameras cannot go. You cannot be watching the president taking a shower. That's, that's a big no-no. Now, so when I woke up, um, it was that that really woke me up. And the Lord said, surveillance. Surveillance. And I'm sitting there and I'm asking God, I mean, surveillance, what surveillance, what, what is surveillance? I mean, so sometimes you, you go to sleep and you wake up and your brain is trying to, to get up. It's like, what is surveillance? So I sat down for a little while and the Holy Spirit started pouring, pouring, pouring into every family. And I want you to listen to this. Every family it doesn't matter whichever family you are coming from every family every family have a spiritual label and i want you to listen to me every family have a spiritual label so if you are writing write spiritual label I am really going to teach deep stuff this morning. So write spiritual label. Every family. Spiritual label. And it, it's a label of identity. It's a label of identity. Most of the time, these labels are spiritually um, known through our umbilical cord. Your umbilical cord, thank you, Lowell. Spiritual label. Spiritual label. Through our umbilical cord, remember, you come from a family. And that family have their own identity. Every family. Your mother's bloodline, your father's bloodline, they have their own identity. God is so wise that he did not make all of us the same. 
everyone have their own identity our fingerprints are not all the same i want you to listen our fingerprint even twins that come out of the same womb don't have the same fingerprint that is what we call identity there is something that identifies you for you for who you are spiritual label the label the label that identifies when you go to the store sometimes it may look like all the product are the same yes they are the same but when you take it to the register to pay for it you will realize that they have for an example a notepad like this okay anyway this is a notepad from from our ministry Savior blessings ministry we have a notepad here now I'm just showing you something okay now in the notepad here right if you look at it very well um, the name um, Sylvia blessing is here Sylvia blessings and it comes with numbers all right so it start from uh, one two three so it's numbered I want to show you something it's numbered besides thank you besides the numbering down here okay we have different scriptures it's like the scriptures for the day we have scriptures underneath it i love god's word so even though this is a notepad but we made it in such a way that every blessed day when you pick up the notepad you can have a scripture underneath it you can write on it now it may look like they are all the same or they are the same but what differentiates one from another is the barcode there is a code behind every every product there is a code and so therefore when you go to the counter and um, you are going to pay for what you took what they do is this they pick up the item and they have a machine a scanner and just as they scan the thing the barcode everything about the product is i'm going deeper everything about the product is all of a sudden captured are you listening to me it's captured and it's recorded into the system so that they will know that this particular item is no more in the storage or the store because it's been purchased so it's no more there so there are times where you go to certain stores and you're looking for a very part i mean a particular thing and they'll tell you they'll go into the system i want you to listen they'll go into the system and will start looking or punching the product into the system or the name of that thing to the system and the system will tell them either they still have it or they don't have it sometimes they say oh the system is telling us that we have one one um you know thing here uh, the same product we have one and so somebody will just run going to look for it all right tells you oh where it is where it is or oh, we have two of this in the system and so they go looking for it so number one every family have their spiritual label it's a label so you are identified i want you to listen oh. people of god you are identified listen to me this morning you are identified 
by the label you may not understand you may not know but it's real a label with that label you are traceable you become traceable because of the label now so when a camera is going to be installed number one whoever has the knowledge you most of the time call somebody that have gone to school that have studied that knows what they are doing not somebody who will come and mess up your property mess up your wall so they call for the expert to come when the expert comes they come to survey they come to look at where they can put the camera i want you to listen to me to where they can position the camera so they know that if you position the camera on the right hand side anybody coming through the camera will capture anyone that is coming through the right side or they place it in in such a way or they position it in such a way that when anybody opens the door it gives them or it captures you or sometimes they even have it on their phones that if somebody is trying to come near your house you may not even be in your house you may be in um for example you are from the caribbean and you are here in america you can look at what is happening in your home in the caribbean even though you are not in the caribbean but you can still monitor what is going on in your home on a device called the phone are you listening to me so therefore the phone the one that is holding the phone can see and know what is going on even though they are not physically in the caribbean for example um maybe um um jamaica your house may be in jamaica you are not in jamaica at the present moment but you can be in america you can be in canada you can be in london and still be able to see what is going on around your house or in your house by a device called the phone now so you call an expert and the expert comes and look around and see where they can position the camera now after they have come to survey and look at where they can position the cameras the next thing is this the one that is skilled the one that is um that knows how to mount them how to operate them now we are living also in a time that anything you are looking for you want to learn how to be a carpenter you want to learn how to install anything you go on youtube and just type that thing in and there will be somebody on youtube teaching you how to do it so therefore the guy will come and look at it and then will come with the instrument will come with the device number one you see them knocking on the walls i want you to listen to me you see them knocking on the walls where they want to position the particular device and so you see them knocking the walls looking for a particular sound because they've been trained and i want you to get it people of god they've been trained and so you see them knocking on the on the wall and they get a particular sound and they say okay this device can be put here based on the sound they are hearing because they've been thought they know where the place is too soft the wall is too soft 
So if they put the device there or they punch a hole there, they're going to mess up the whole wall. So they look for a place where when they put in, um, they drill in anything, they will, also, they will be able to drill it in without the device falling or making a mess on the wall. So they come in. Number one, they bring the device itself. Um, either it's a DVR, they bring it. And then when they bring it, it comes with cords. Okay? They have cords, um, sometimes cable cords, and then the, cord, the, the, the device cord itself, they bring it. So, after looking at where the wall, where they can put in, now they begin to drill a hole. The interesting part is this. They don't drill from outside in. They drill from inside out. People of God, I want you to get it. When they come drilling a hole, they don't drill the hole from the outside in. No. They start from the inside. So they drill the hole from the inside out. And so when they punch the hole through the inside, it goes outside. And so the cord is put through from the inside. Why? Because the camera is not going to be on the outside. If it is inside, they first put the camera inside before they take it outside. And so the device itself might not be outside. The device is in the inside. Oh, Jesus. The device is in the inside. And so therefore, oh, people of God, if we can only have understanding of this, my father, my maker, The individual comes and punches the hole. They come inside. So therefore, so therefore, the one that is coming in knows exactly what they are doing. Knows the time they are going to take based on on their surveillance based on them coming to inspect and know what to do based on it they know this job can take an hour or it can take two three hours based on the bigness of the place or the largeness of the place they know it so they drill the the hole from the inside and they drill it and they take it outside and then they put a cord okay they put a cord, it's all starting from the inside because the major device cannot be outside. The major device cannot be on the outside. The device ought to be inside. So therefore, whatever tracking device it is, it's not coming from the outside. That tracking machine is from the inside. So therefore, the tracking machine or the tracking device is from your own family. A man's enemy is from his own family. It is not coming from outside. People of God, listen to me. It is not coming from outside. It is coming from inside. Now, if somebody wants to come in and install, well, there should be somebody that will give them the access for them to come into the house. Because if they don't get access and they enter into the house, they can be arrested. So, therefore, they need somebody. Oh, I remember when we were called, we called somebody to, when we moved, that was years ago. And we called somebody to come and install the cable. They said we'll be there between this time and this time. Make sure you have somebody in the house to grant us access. 
have somebody in the house to grant us access into the building when you are going out and maybe you leave a friend your daughter your son whatever whoever opens the door is the one that gave the access to that individual to come in now if the person opens your door without your permission that individual can be arrested and how are they good when they arrest the individual they will charge the individual of illegal trespassing you you don't have the legal permission and so even if somebody is coming or going to somebody's house to arrest them the first question we are thought to ask is that show me give me an identity card what makes you legal for you to enter into my house to arrest and so that individual that officer have to go and get a warrant so the officer comes to your house with a warrant for your for your arrest permission to access your home and to take from your home The individual comes in and drills the hole from the inside and goes outside. And then they start pulling the cord. Okay? So if it is from maybe let's say the building is um, maybe 4,000 square foot. What they do is this. When they put the, the, the wire, they punch the hole from the inside out and they put the wires in there, when they, they will have to make sure that the wire moves from one end to where the cameras ought to be. And so they put, punch the hole inside out and then they pull the, the wires in there and they begin to drag the wire to where the camera ought to be some wires are invisible they have this thing they put around the wire that makes it invisible that nobody will see that this is a wire that is connected to a device there are times there are many many or different things in the house so according to the, the stuff that is in the house some of them they decide to label it or they decide to differentiate it by the cord, the different colors of the cord. So you know that the red cord here or the wire is for this. Um, the white wire is for this. The one that looks like yellow is for this. So it's been identified by the colors. So it is. There is an identification a spiritual oh god a spiritual label that identifies me from my brothers and even though there are five brothers every one of them have their own identity so based on the spiritual label they know who this label belongs to why because you are in the family and there is a label for every individual that is in the family. There are times you look at somebody and just you may not even know who the person is. But just by looking at the individual, you can tell that this is the daughter of this man or this is the son of this man. Why? Because they look alike. They don't just get up and drill a hole. They take time to measure. So you see them with a the tape and they are measuring where the camera is going to be. They are measuring where, what hole to punch, the, the, the size of the hole. Everything is measured according to 
the size of the camera. So if the camera, for example, is this big, there is the, the front side of it and the back side of it. So therefore, the back side of it is the one where the cord is connected to. And so therefore, they will have to know what size. So they measure it according to the size so that they will not either make it too big or too small. Now, when the label, now I'm, I'm only on label, spiritual label. The guy comes and set the device. When the device is set, they have monitors. You can't just use a monitor. Monitor without the major device is just a waste of time. And so there is a major device, but the major device is not outside, it's in the family. It's home. It's in the house. And the, the cameras are outside, are mounted, some outside, some inside. After it is mounted, for example, somebody will have to download the app on the phone. When the app is downloaded on the phone, anytime you punch the app, the whole system opens up. And when the device is put in place, for the device to start working, you need a passcode. You need a pass code. You need a pass code. There should be a pass code on the device. Now, when you want to operate the device, um, you put in a pass code and then you put in, um, there is something else. You put in a user, a username and then the pass code. So the username comes on first. They give you a space for the username. So you, you create a username and then you put in a password. When the password is put in, you are the only one that knows the password to the device. Unless and until you decide that you are going to give the password to maybe a member of your family so that the member of your family can also access oh god the member of your family can also access the same device because you have given the, your your family member the security code the username and the password to that system now there are people who some way somehow they are so skilled that when you have a device it doesn't matter what passcode you put on they will be able to Cut through the passcode and get into your phone. They arrested a young man right here, I believe in New Jersey, that they said that he planned to, um, I think he, he bombed something. And the guy, his phone was taken. And the FBI wanted to access the phone. The phone, I think the phone was Apple. It was an Apple phone. 
and they wanted to access the phone but they needed Apple to decode the phone so that they will be able to go into the phone and find out if he was talking to somebody or a group of people and as an apple will not grant give them the permission an apple was saying if they do then it's an invasion of privacy because there are millions of people that are using the iPhone, the Apple phone. And so if they give the access, then there are millions of people whose information will be leaked out. Facebook. Not too long ago, the CEO was on the hot seat and um, because of the election business and he has to answer questions why because there are millions of people whose identity was used without them even knowing that their informations were being used I'm going somewhere I want us to pray, but I want to show you something. If you realize, I have not quoted one scripture. If you realize. Because I want us to come to a place of understanding before we start. The one that have the username and the password. It's literally the one that has control over the device. But there is somebody else that has control over the device. Even though I bought this phone, I have put a username and a password on it, yet the manufacturer of this phone knows it doesn't matter how much or it doesn't matter what password or username I'll put on this device. The manufacturer of this device knows how to enter into my phone with even with the password on it. And with a username, the one that manufactured this thing can easily go on this device and track every little thing that is on this device. Even though I am the one that have bought the device and I have every information on here. And they have, with the Apple, they have something they call the iCloud. And people store information in the, what we call the iCloud. Now, the one that manufactured this knows how to tap into the iCloud. And it doesn't matter whatever secret information I have on this thing. That to me, I'm saying I have a passcode on, I have a username, so nobody can go on my phone. You are lying bad. Somebody out there knows how to enter into your phone. And every information on your phone can be taken. Do you know the reason why? Somebody can be there and thinking that I'm secured. Everything I'm doing is covered. Only for the person to realize that whilst he's, he or she is thinking they are covered, every information about them is outside. 
the FBI, the CIA, the Interpol are tracking every area of that individual's life and that individual have no idea that their life is out there and somebody knows every little thing about them. The device comes with a manual, number one, comes with a manual. It comes either with a mouse, okay? It comes with cable wires. They connect the cable wires. Now, the cable wires are connected to a source. The system, here is the system. There are wires that are connected to it. But all the wires are connected to a source. And that source, even though it may be a socket on the wall, but that source also have wires. And the wires that is in, you don't see the wires, you only see the socket. Now, the socket, inside the socket have wires. And the wires is also connected to some wire. And that wire is also connected to a couple of wires. And that couple of wires is also connected to, to another set of wires. And that it goes on and on and on until it gets to the main source. Open your Bible with me. Look, the book of Luke. Look. <laughs> na na na. Na na na. And crown him Lord of all. Na na na. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Look. <laughs> Luke chapter 14. With songs of deliverance. Whenever I am. Afraid. You are my hiding place. Come on. Luke chapter 14. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Open your Bible with me. Come on. <laughs> Luke chapter 14. Let's read verse 1. Na na na. In the strength of the Lord. You are my hiding place. <laughs> oh, whenever I am afraid, oh, can I Zivana madom rendi vana mahashto. Kade de medi maradi varagazoge de brante de me kabarabadi. And it came to pass, kabaradi, as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread of the, on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. 
And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him. They watched him. <laughs> I want to dwell a little bit on this. And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the Pharisees, chief Pharisees, to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him. Jesus, talking about Jesus. Weren't there people that were eating with the Pharisees? Yes, they were. Why was Jesus under surveillance? Why did they watch him? Why did they watch him? Oh, somebody said closely. Is that, is that what your translation said? They watched him closely. They watched him. Why were they watching the master? They were watching the master because his life, his ministry, his way of life, to them was kind of strange. Not only that, but they were looking for something to accuse him of. And so, his intention was not a bad intention, but he was being watched. Why are you doing this on a particular day? Not only that, but why are you doing this eating bread with people you are not supposed to? And so he was under the eyes monitors were just monitoring his movement where is he going now what is he doing now why is he going there thank you Celia they were monitoring and looking so they can reel accusations against him so they can trap him thank you so they can monitor him so that they can they can watch him so that they can accuse him oh they did that for a reason they didn't do that because they felt like it no they did it because they had a reason for doing it the question is somebody will ask why are they monitoring me why am i under surveillance if you did not belong number one number two if there is no label on your life number three if you have nothing in you nobody cares to put a tracking or a monitoring device on you because you are no threat to them you don't have any life you don't have nothing going on so there was no way they would put anything on you because you are to them you are nothing but because god has made you valuable your future is bright your life is bright your 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 destiny is powerful and so they have already said something in the family that there is a line that no man can cross now they know that because of what god has put in you 
you have the tenacity to cross that line. And so because of it, we have to put a device that will track this individual that when she or he make an attempt to cross, it is like, it is like somebody who is arrested and then they put a device on your ankle. Ankle, what they call ankle monitoring device? What do they call that thing? <laughs> it's not an ankle bracelet. It's, it's this device. It's, it's a tracking device. And when that tracking device is put on your leg, wherever you go, it is, it is coded in the system that you cannot go a certain mile so the very moment you leave where the radius of where the ankle bracelet is is connected to the very moment you leave that area it sends a signal that you are out of that area oh god it sends a signal that you are out of a particular area and when you get out of that area it tells them that now you are becoming a threat why because for example if somebody killed somebody and uh, you go to prison and then somewhere somehow they bring you out they put you under house arrest now the, thank you you have an anchor money ankle monitor now with your ankle monitor if you go out of where they've given you um, to stay if you go out of that place it signals to them at the power base the power base that you've gotten out of where you were supposed to be now they begin to now track they begin to now track i pray for you today my god there are certain families it is not a tracking device or your ankle there are certain families it is a particular body odor a smell i pray for you if they are tracking you by your body smell may that smell be covered by the blood of jesus oh god oh god oh god oh god oh god if it is a label i pray today may that label be covered by the blood of jesus if the numbers are six and eight and three and two and zero and six and one and three and eight I pray today in the name of Jesus because every number have its own significance. I pray let the blood cover it. 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 In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, every tracking device, any spiritual label, I pray today, let that label catch fire. Are you here this morning? I said, let that label catch fire. Labels. are known by the family a family is a tree let's put it that way the entire family is a tree and the families that are connected to that tree are the branches therefore the major tree knows that the branches are receiving strength the reason why the branches are not dead is because the main tree is alive and is feeding or the the branches are feeding off the main tree so the main tree number one is strong number two its roots are fortified because if the root of that major tree is not fortified then the tree will not be strong then the branches will not be strong 
So the cause of the tree being strong is the root, how deep the root is, the stems, how deep it is that will give the tree life and will give the branches life. And you realize there are certain branches when the tree is there, the branches are there, but on those, this one branch also have leaves, different leaves on one branch. And that is the family. The family is a big tree and it has branches. The branches are your aunties, your cousins, your, your, you know, if it's your auntie, your auntie is one branch and the children of your auntie are the little branches on the tree, on the, on the branch. Your uncle is part, but the, you all come from one big tree and that tree also have a root. Okay. Now that root there, you realize Oh my God, Father, give me the name of this plant here. Gee, there are certain plants. You realize that as you uproot it from the ground, you see that the root is so deep. So once you are pulling it, you realize that the, 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 the stem, okay, the stem or the root is, is pulling, is pulling and, and for example, oh Father, help me. For example. This is a tree. The tree has branches. Those branches have leaves on them. The tree is on the ground. Now, on, under the ground are still, what do you call stems? Okay, underneath it, the tree. Okay? And it goes deep. Some goes so deep that when the tree is uprooted, you see that the the um the 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 the, the, the what do you, stem or root whatever they call that thing whatever it's 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 also connected and so as you are pulling it when you try pulling it you realize that even though the tree might be out but it's not completely out from the ground because the roots are deep very deep deep down and so the more you try to uproot it, the more you realize that the stem or the, the whatever is all the way. It goes all the way, sometimes maybe a mile. So when you are pulling it, just one thing there underneath the tree, as you are pulling it, you realize that it is going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And by the time it, you get to that, that particular, sometimes it's even connected to another tree. So by the time you get there, you have literally pulled a whole lot. And when you get there, you realize that, oh my goodness, I thought that the root has come to an end. No, it is connected to another tree. And on and on and on and on and on it goes. People of God, we are just taking labor. We are just dealing with family spiritual labels. The label that has or the label that identifies you as part of the family. The label that identifies you as part of the family. Now, it is that label that gives spirit access to your life because of the label. Labels differentiate one product from another product. It might be the same. It might look the same. But the labels are different. The numbers are different. So when you take back the product to the store, for example, you realize that when this cut, it might be the same thing, look the same, I mean two or maybe three. They come with different barcodes 
because it's not the same thing. It might look the same on the outward, but underneath it have its own label or back barcode and the barcode differentiate one item from another item even though they look the same so in your family you all are under a tree but the labels are different the label you have might be the same label your mother has or this particular label here is for for example your mother or your grandma now the label that belongs to your grandma under that, that label when they put in that label they know that this label is for the grandma under the grandma's label or under the grandma they know that your grandmother has six children every child have their own label and if they had six children, then they, they are, their children as well have the same, a different label. Therefore, if they punch in the label or the number, for example, of your grandma, everybody from your grandma down, they are able to see and monitor. It's just one tree. The tree has branches. That branch, one branch, have maybe three or four. But the tree is not standing alone. The tree is number one on the earth. Now the earth is, is, is another thing. Now, do you know why they call the earth mother earth they call the earth mother earth because it has what it takes to produce when you plant you put a i mean a seed the seed dies and it germinates why because the earth has a womb the earth has a womb and so therefore when something is planted, the earth, because it has a womb, the earth now takes the seed. When it takes the seed, the seed dies, and the earth now, because it has a womb, the earth now births. So as it's in the ground, there is water that sometimes your eyes don't see. There is water, rain falls, and then the earth now gets pregnant with the seed. And out of the seed comes the tree. And when the tree comes, the earth is connected. The water is... Co oh, God. The earth... There are nutrients in the earth. There are minerals in the earth. You and I, we come from dust. Earth. We come from dust. The earth. And so, when we die, we are to be buried going back down to the earth the earth so whatever that is being used to monitor it is not void of the earth i won't ask <laughs> it is not void of the earth so therefore, why is it that when people, especially people from the African continent, I don't know about certain part of Africa, but at least I know of where I come from, 
you realize that when they want to destroy a life, what they do is they take whatever they take and they begin to speak to the earth. They begin to pour to the earth. They begin to declare to the earth. So therefore, somebody can be in, for example, Botswana, for example. Somebody can be in Botswana and their source is, for example, maybe Liberia. The one that is in Liberia can affect the one that is in Botswana by consulting or by connecting to the earth your nativity. I want us to pray because this was given to me by the Lord. I don't want to rush to bombard us with everything today. The earth, like I said, those from Africa, I don't know about certain parts of Africa, but from where I come from, you realize there are things that are being used. Some use water. Why? Because every one of us have water in us. And we use water for a lot. You take a shower, you cook, you do your laundry. Everything you do literally comes or needs water. I want to end here. Good morning, Sue. I want to end here because I want us to pray. Any label on your life, any label on your life, we are going to use the weapons God has given us the, the blood, the word, the name, the fire of the Holy Ghost. We are going to use the weapons that God has given us. And by the authority that is invested in us as children of the living God, we are going to stand and begin to contend with any device, especially the family spiritual label. Therefore, any label that is attached to your life this morning, we are going to pray. May that label catch fire. Let the blood erase every mark, every letter from that label. And may the label catch fire. So that when they are looking, when they tap in, the, the label on the top or the numbers on the top, when they punch it in and they are looking, you will not be located. Your children will not be located. Your family will not be located. In the precious name of Jesus, any 
any label, do you know, that they can put a spiritual label on you? And that label, wherever you go, people would abandon you. People would just look down on you. Why? People will just disgrace you for no reason. Because there is a label on your life. Have you ever seen somebody who is not even a prostitute and yet people label the individual as a prostitute? It's a spiritual label. Yeah. It is a spiritual label. Yeah. Or they can label you as a liar. And you know you are not. They can label you as a gossiper. And you know and you know you are not. It's a label. They place it on you. You may not see it, but everybody else sees it. And so, you see the effect of it. Where you go places and you are rejected. I mean, you, 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 you don't know what you have done. You love people. You, you help people. At the end of the day, they see you as a traitor. They see you as a liar. They see, I mean, they put all kinds of names on you. You will work and work and work and work and work. And when it is time for you to uh, enjoy your labor, you lose that job. You lose it. Label. We are praying this morning. Listen, if you don't pray, then I don't know what is, what is going on with you. We are praying this morning. Any label that is on your life. Any label. You go to a place. You put in everything. I'm, I'm talking about everything. You put in your time. You put in your effort. I mean, your mind. I mean, you, 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 you're not, the knowledge you have, you add to what they have. At the end of the day, you you get you get you get fired. You let you. Get, I mean, I mean, it's a whole lot. I mean, sometimes they will bring somebody for you to train. Now, after you've trained that individual, that individual becomes your boss, and you are still on in the same the same position. My darling, it's a label. You are praying this morning. Let that label catch fire. Holy Ghost fire, consume any label that the enemy has placed on me. My my God, in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Begin to pray. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lift up your voice. Come on. Begin to pray. Jesus. 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 Come on. Lift up your voice. Mazika. Libarato. Jika Tomaha. Come on. Lift up your voice. Come on. Begin to pray. Come on. Let's do it together. Come on. Radi Malega Domaha. Libarato. Zibri Ikapato. La Baratu. Jimana Maduza. Makutamaha. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, tell them to pay attention to their surroundings. He says, pay attention to your surroundings. I'm repeating it again. He says, pay attention to your surroundings. Come on, let's pray. Any label that is on you, come on. Come on, lift up your voice. Any label, any label, any label, any label, any label, any label. Come on. Maradi Bazuka Dabahado. Father, this morning, any spiritual label. Father, yes, Lord, that is upon our lives. Today, we command that label, my God, to catch fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, anything, my God, they are using as a label. Father, to label our lives, my God, that will cause them to be able to monitor our our progress and our life in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, begin to pray. Mari Dado, Marato Jigada Branta Maha. Come on, come on, come on. We are praying this prayer. Come on. Magadom Bradia, Uza Gada Branto, Melema Du Zivana Mai Gada Branta Branta Kadagranda, Le Mazoso, Makoto Badi, La Barado, Zigada Branta Mahai, La Marakuta Baba, Adinimi Izo, Makuta Badia, Le Marato Jigada Branta Bado. Makai, come on, lift up your voice. Come on, any label, any label, any label, any label, any label by tender by fire. Magadi Mado, Mele Madu Zabatu Kadimaha, Paradi Azozo, Makun Tabadabadi Zabrati Katomahaya. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, pay 
attention to your surroundings. He says, tell them to pay attention to their surroundings. In other words, the people around you pay attention. Father, today, every label, we command it to catch fire. In the name of Jesus, any spiritual label, we command it to catch fire. Now, in the name of Jesus, come on, lift up your voice. Makadundi eka libra to barada adenimi kibanda kwa parado zabanteneme beri aku badaba. Come on, lift up your voice, people of God. Come on, begin to pray. Any label on your life, come on, command it to catch fire. Any label on your life, come on, command it to catch fire. A baradi azo makunta badabadia meleme ande bradi mazuzo payaku talabadi agadea maro adi aboro peni akadin denimi apa come on come on come on come on any label come on come on come on come on come on lift up your voice people of god come on we are praying just this prayer come on mazi gidiba paradoza branta bada father any label that was upon my four mothers or my forefathers oh god any label that was on them the father that connected me to that label today in the name of the lord jesus i command that label to catch fire i command that label catch fire in the mighty name of jesus people of god lift up your voice come on begin to pray come on begin to pray makitaba libarato jigada brantaba adirimi kibo rasto badumikai mare adebrato zagada grantamaha i command that label to catch fire makidado maratu sabadiba mekentari bitankantebro periaka brado zigado grantenimika i command that label catch fire in the name of jesus 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 makadabada mezika tuma aba pradi azokete grantana makai come on lift up your voice command it to catch fire by tender by fire command that label mazakadiba morakuta badabada come on lift up your voice Matiba rabo sibiri eka rabaza ko tatata maradu jimante bradia akaramadi zibrie parado zabado badabaha panda kadumbre ekete gadabadi father in the spiritual label in the name of Jesus maziki diba paradu mayanto bada akanimi ipanda kando debo o paradi kadu jivado pati katunda adima ai makadada dunimi ibo pa Rakita Baratuja, Father, any label, my God, that is upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, we command that label to catch fire. Mazige deba, Paradu Zakunta Maha, Adidibi Ipato, Poraki Baradidama. Come on, people of God, pray. My people of God, pray. Abakubadi, Pene Agadada, Rako Baradu Ado, Mantanamadu Zibiri Akab, Marakita Bad. Do paradasto katuma ai mentene meka bradi maro rabasua ababa ele matubra akadin de de bosta in the name of Jesus I want us to pray you are praying may God may God I want you to listen to me you are taking authority. over any label that has been placed on your life sometimes people label you as a prostitute people label you as a liar people label you as a gossiper people label you as um as a thief and you know yourself that that's not you you are praying there are times where you go to places people love you then all of a sudden they hate you without a cause you are praying it's a label you are praying this morning may every negative label and may any label for that matter you are praying let that label catch fire are you listening 
are you listening to me people of God you are praying let that label let it catch fire in the name of Jesus you know you know from experience you know the kind of label whether they are labeling you as a gossiper whether they are labeling you as one that 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 destroys homes whether they are labeling you as as a whoremonger whether they are labeling you as a thief what whatever label you know it you know it some of you have ex already experienced it and some of you you are experiencing it there is a label there is a label now one minute people are into you the next minute they don't want to see anything about you it's a label you are praying this morning let that label catch fire open your mouth people of god and begin to fire prayer come on come on fire prayer this morning come on fire prayer this morning maradi azize peka talabaduzo makutabaha adarua ikamanto jigada granta abanoa di zibidi akapa le maratu bare le baraduzo kotomi apandaya come on come on come on come on come on Maradi azo mendi a parada rabazua aka le moroto zibri ika la marati jabadoma ai makula brantabra maradi azuzoma father i pray my god for that woman that the label of divorce my god is upon her the label of divorce father yes in the name of jesus marakita bado father yes she has half children but there is no man my god makuli ibranda bra father that will hold on to her i pray today in the name of jesus i break this label i command this label to catch fire imazugada bra paradi akula abadi mantaramadu bre ekete bra maradu abara toshti granda maziza makita laba le moraku tabadia maka paradi azuzo mente ne Kopari Raki Baradoma Mantarabado Bradishe Paradum Akabada Menimi Al Baradu Zugo Poratu Jivarati Jagra Marati Paradumika Adada da 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 Moraku Tatata Toro Le Marada da da Doro Paradi Aku Badi Apai Makunta Badimi Ibaradi Come on, come on, Brown. Come on, let that label catch fire. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Open your Bible with me to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Come on, open your Bible with me. Let's look at something here. Ezekiel. Chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Let's look at it. Ezekiel chapter 16. Let's start from verse 1 to 4. Ezekiel chapter 16. Where I really want us to look at is the verse 4. But let's start from verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 16. Again, the word, our time is up. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man. Cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. And say that saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem. Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Look at it. He's talking to Jerusalem. Or to the people that I look at it, 
Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Ezekiel, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations and say, That says the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Cana. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother an Hittite. Now look at what God is saying through the prophet Ezekiel. As of thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut. In the day you were born, your navel was not cut. Neither was thou washed in water to supply thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pity thee to do any of these things, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loothing of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by, we are praying this morning, he says, and when I passed by and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. I have caused thee to multiply as the bird of the field, and thou hast increased and waxed great. And thou art come to excellent ornament. Thy breasts are fashioned and thy hair is grown. Whereas thou was naked and bare. We are praying. He says when I, verse 6, he says when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. We are praying. The father this morning, we know that your spirit is at work in us. But as you are passing and you are, because you see, the Bible says that every morning there are new messes, okay? Um, new messes every morning. Every morning. God does new things. Every day, there are blessings that are released in each day from God. There are blessings. Some of us may get it. Some of us, it will slip right through our hands. Okay. You are praying this morning that as the Lord is pouring blessing upon this day, the eighth day, you are lifting up your voice and saying, Lord, do not pass me by. Father, I may be in a place of despair. I may be in my blood, but Jehovah, do not pass me by. I pray as you speak spoke to your people and said live i will live and not die to declare the wondrous works of the living god lift up your voice and let's pray this last prayer come on lift up your voice people of god begin to pray and declare lord i know i will live in the name of jesus come on lift up your voice come on lift up your voice come on child of god begin to pray come on lift up your voice my god i said lift up your voice child of god wherever you are lift up your voice and begin to pray mezigidi abaratusho malatuka badi dini mikaya rabasuzu maya katina maai moroko baradi azo paratashto kunta brandi adia megadada makudada akule ada makadodo marakita branto medi aba maraka paradi ivo Mazize konta goda ba akadua medi adi iro akoko makadida makindiri ashto grando mele mavuva aku paradi ibaro le katanduri o kabara in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God. Now, whilst I was getting myself ready 
for today. The Lord gave me a word for somebody. I don't know who this individual is. I have vowed to God. If God have not spoken, I'm shutting my mouth. Because I don't want to be in trouble with him. This word, I don't know who this word is for. But he gave me Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 9 for somebody. I saw it so clear. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 9. Open your Bible. I don't know who this word is for. But if I were you, I would take that word for myself. Isaiah 41 verse 9. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. I don't know who this word is for. But I receive it for myself as well. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 9. I don't know who this word is for. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. I take this word for myself as well. But I want you, people of God, listen to the word. He says, Isaiah 41 verse 9. He says, thou whom I, God, have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof. In other words, there are great people, but I still called you. There are great men, the chief men, the influential people, but I still called you. I want you to listen to me. He says, no, listen to the word of God through me. Okay, listen. He says, for whom thou, thou whom I have taken, I took you from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof. There are great men, there are great women, but I called you. There are influential men, there are influential women. There are rich men, there are rich women. He says, but I called you, my God, I called you and said unto you, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. I have chosen you and I have not cast you away. I believe is for this word is for somebody, but I take it for myself as well. And therefore we are using this as our prayer point for the eighth day of our 21 days of fasting. You said, I am your servant. You have chosen me and you have not cast me away. Therefore, Lord, I pray that even as you have promised that you have not cast me away and that I am your servant. Father, bring to pass that which you have spoken, that which you have written concerning my life. Bring it to pass. Lift up your voice and pray this prayer with me. I close my Bible. Lift up your voice and pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, you have spoken you said I am your servant my God I am asking this morning that Lord you will bless in blessing may you bless in multiplying may you multiply in increasing may you increase in enlargement may you enlarge in the name of Jesus father may we go ahead of those that have gone ahead of us in the mighty name of Jesus Mazakute 
Gada, Librato Jugodo Gran Tabadia. Come on, come on, come on. Lift up your voice. Our, our time is gone. But I want us to pray this prayer. We are done. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift it up and begin to pray this prayer. Maradi Akuta Madi Akapadi. Limaratu Shivaro Atu Granda Baduma. Ebeni Akude. Azazaraku Tabronda. Ili Maratu Shige de Gradush de Maha. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Father, I am thanking you that I am yours. I am thanking you that you called me a servant. I am thanking you this morning that Father, you are saying that you have not cast me away. You have not cast your people away. Therefore, Lord, every promise that you have promised us, Jehovah, let there be a fulfillment. My God, we are in the month of August. Father, today is the eighth day. Mani akadu ibaratu jima meki paradu akobadu maai. Father, may you arise on our behalf in the mighty name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Makida akodo ribasua abadimi ipa mantanama uko baradi a le marakita badaya le baratuji adabaha mantanama zuzo me kondi abaratu jigabaha li baratu zagranta labadua ramazi gede gede ramasa katunimi ibaratu shte granta badua come on come on come on come on mandani mi ia remasu kubara di jabado makabarandi abanda baha mandiri bi ozozo meka paradi akule ebradi maraku tatanimi ibranta baha akadi ma o meni adada reko paradumi ibaratu jogobra pradi iboze i pray for my sons and daughters and i'm asking this morning in the name of jesus meni akidi araposto bradaba in the name of jesus the son of the living god thank you holy spirit i want us to pray um this last prayer and in the book of second kings open your bible with me i want us to take a look at this here and um it just dropped in my spirit second kings i want us to take a look into this here second kings second kings second kings chapter 6 second kings chapter 6 second kings look at second kings chapter 6 i want us to pray a prayer there all right <clears throat> before before I let you go, I want us to pray a prayer there. Second Kings chapter six. Second Kings chapter six. Let's start from verse eight. I want to show you something there, and I want us to use it as a prayer point this morning. Second Kings chapter 6. Let's start from verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware, 
that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once or twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing, and he called his servant and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet, that is in, the, that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. The king of Syria started a fight with the, um, the Israelites. And Elisha, Elijah had been taken and Elisha was in the scene. And around that era, the prophets, or God was using the prophet mightily. And Elisha was sent an information to the king and would tell the king, be very careful of where you are treading because traps have been set for you. And any time the king of Syria will, will make an attempt to come after the people, some way, somehow, the people will escape his traps. So the king calls a meeting and the king says, I don't understand something. There is somebody among us that is revealing my secret to the king of Israel because this whole thing doesn't make any sense. So I know you are my people and I reason with you and I tell you what's going on. But somebody is giving the information to the king. And one of them says, it's none of us. Nobody is revealing your secret anyway. There is a prophet by the name Elisha. And this Elisha knows even what you are doing in your bedroom. The man is not in your bedroom, but he knows what you are doing. Prophetic eye. I want you to pray this morning that Father, give me the eye of a prophet. You are praying this morning. Because let me tell you this. We are talking about labeling. If God does not help you, for your eyes to be open, you will not know what is monitoring and who is monitoring and what device they are using. Because if you don't know, you see, some of us pray and we pray, we pray and we pray, we pray, we pray. But if you don't hit the right target, you'll be just, just throwing weapons everywhere. But then the right target, the right thing will still be standing there and be fighting you without you knowing what you ought to attack. So you will be attacking everything, but the real weapon is still be, will still be there. I want us to pray this morning in the name of Jesus, that Father, give me the eye of a prophet. Father, that whatever the enemy is planning, I will not be unaware of what the plans of the enemy is. Lift up your voice just for one second. Father, I pray for your people that our eyes may be open to behold. Father, the hidden secrets and mysteries of the things that the enemy is doing in the realms of the spirit that we will not be denied, O oh God, of this great opportunity. Give us the eye of the spirit that we may be able to see, we may be able to see even the deepest things or the darkest places, my God, of the enemy, the places where things are done and stored and manufactured in the name of Jesus. Not only do you we pray that you open our eyes, but give us what it takes that after you have opened our eyes, we will also be able, Father, to destroy the weapons and the plans and the scheme of the enemy. Thank you for answered prayer. 
in Jesus name. Amen. The Lord richly bless you this morning and um, it's my prayer that you are not going to um, just chillax like my daughter would say. You are not going to just chillax but you are going to be um, on fire in this 21 days of fasting and prayer. You are going to believe God that Father, this fasting will not be in vain. This praying will not be in vain. But God will arise and have mercy upon you and upon your entire family. Now listen to me. You are in the hands of God. Stay there. In God's hands, there is mercy, there is grace, there is healing. I want you to know that one can take themselves out and begin to depend on your own strength. But don't stay in his hands. He knows how to take you to places you never ever dreamed of being. Be connected. Be sober. Be vigilant. Are you listening to me? Now, if you have not registered for the women's conference this month, um, August 30th, 31st, and September 1st, please do so. We are empowering the body of Christ um, to take a stand. The work is big. Everybody is doing their part. And this is our part um, that and God is bringing people that we may equip them and send them out so they can go and be very effective so may the Lord bless and keep you if you have not given your life to Jesus this morning I'm throwing the invitation to you that you surrender your heart to him allow him how would you know how to fight these battles and get yourself and 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 decode and we'll look into decoding or the code how to decode all right and buy into the system and know what is going on in the system so you can disconnect yourself from the system and so may god um lift you up if you have not received jesus say dear lord jesus i am sorry for anything and everything I have done, I acknowledge I am a sinner. But I invite you to come into my heart and be Lord over my life. I let go and I lift up my heart to you. And I'm saying, Lord, have your way. I confess with my mouth that you, Jesus, you are Lord. And I accept you into my heart. Thank you for this great opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed this prayer, I want you, because we are scattered all over the world, look for a Bible-believing church in whichever country you are in and make sure you connect yourself very well. In Jesus' precious name, amen. In this period of fasting and of prayer, I am asking you to read, study the word. Don't just read it. Study. Pray. Fasting without studying the word and prayer, you are just going on a hunger strike. I don't want us to do that. And I know it's summertime and it's very hot in certain places. And so during the course of the day, it's okay to drink water. If you want to drink water, it's okay. Because your body ought to be, um, um, you know, um, you don't have, your body shouldn't be dry. You understand? Um, so the more water you drink, you are literally cleansing your system as well. So make sure, because the body, the, the weather is hot, so make sure you, you take in water. But don't drink cold water, all right? I know some love cold water, but don't drink cold water. Maybe room temperature water. Just make sure 
you have some water in your system all right and um, I know that everything is going to be okay by the grace of the living God if the Lord touches your heart and um, you want to sow into this fasting you can go on my website sylviablessings.org and sow there your soul your your sacrifice um, will go a long way the Lord bless you in helping us do what we are called to do and it to be a blessing to you I love you with the love of the living God know that with God not some things all things are possible see you when I see you the Lord bless if you are um, on YouTube subscribe to our YouTube channel there if you're on Facebook follow us on Facebook share the video let somebody be blessed the Lord bless you love you until then this is Sylvia blessings bless morning bye-bye